Vore 7. This is a rifle that a lot of people have been waiting for. A high quality, well built 308 bullpup. Yes, there have been other 308 bullpups on the market. You know, the Kel Tech 308 bullpup. I've had a couple of them. They're okay. Um, you know, when they weren't price gouging them, they were affordable. But I'll be honest with you, the, qu the quality of the construction left a little bit to be desired. And a lot of people had problems with them. My very first one, I had all sorts of problems with. My second one has run much better. But still, it didn't live up to that military tough type of design. And so people were really looking for something in 308 that they could use for hunting, because bullpups lend themselves well to that type of an environment for self-defense working out on the ranch, being in the country. Bull pups are just handy, but they wanted something more than 5.56 five, or, you know, intermediate calibers. They wanted a heavy hitting caliber like 308. Enter the Tavor 7. Now, I have had for, gosh, close to a year, uh, a prototype of the rifle. This is from Copper Custom. They are right now selling at Copper for $19.99. Uh, this is the non-prototype actual production rifle we're going to be shooting here this afternoon. They made some changes from the, from the prototype to this one, but um, we'll break it all down for you guys. This gun borrows from both the original Tavor in 5.56 and the X95. It has components of that in it as well, and it, it kind of marries the features of both into a very unique rifle that they've really quite, uh, uh, they've changed quite a bit, I should say, in terms of how easily it is to switch it from right to left hand operation. So that's all stuff we're going to get into here in the video. It uses standard P mags or SR25 or Lancer mags. We'll demonstrate their use uh, in the video. But today we will be using some American Eagle. This is some 150 grain, uh, just generic range ammunition. We'll do some accuracy testing. Uh, right now we have the rifle set up with one of the new American Defense Red Dot sights. We'll talk more about that, about that in the video. And then we also have some uh, American Eagle, I'm sorry, a uh, federal gold medal match. And this stuff is 175 grain. I think we might even have some 168s out here. We'll try shooting this thing for groups and see how she does. So we'd like to thank our friends at federal for supplying the ammunition to the channel. All right, so let's go ahead and load up a few rounds, do a little bit of shooting here, and then let's do a deep dive into the new Tavor 7, which is a 308 bullpup. I have the Tavor 7 set up as how I would set the rifle up. If I were to use it out here on the ranch for you know defensive purposes or just walking around the property, whatever. I like red dot sights. I don't care too much for magnified optics. So I have an OSX Helix suppressor on it. And for red dot sights, one of the new uh, American Defense red dot sights, it's called the Spec. And it looks very similar to a Comp M5. It's 369 over on the Copper website. It comes with everything in the box that you need to set it up on the rifle. One of the things I can't stand about some red dot sights you pay a lot of money for is it doesn't come with a mount. It doesn't come with a battery. It doesn't come with the tools to mount it. This comes with everything. So we're trying it out. This is the first time I've used it and it's on the Tavor 7. We have our Ipsic kill zone target down at 250 yards, only about that wide and only about that tall. And uh, we're gonna shoot just some standard ball ammunition, the affordable stuff, what most of us would shoot. So standard configuration, affordable ammo, 150 grain, Federal American Eagle. Let's just see how well this serves me at that distance. 250 yards. Hopefully we see some trace today. Wow, I heard the center plate hit that one. Oh, come on, Tim.
Oop, didn't lock open. Real quick, Jason brought this up. It's just me being dumb. This is probably what's happening. My rear bag rest, this is your bolt release right here. If I get the rear bag rest on it, it will push up on this, and that's what would keep the bolt from locking to the rear because it's actually what releases the bolt. And so that's probably why it's not locking open when I'm shooting it off the bench. Oops. The original Tavor in 5.56 and the X95 are truly ambi rifles, meaning you can configure the guns for complete right or left hand usage. Unlike Steyr Augs, for example, you can convert them to right or left hand eject, but the charging handle stays on the left hand side of the rifle. These rifles, everything is convertible to, from one side of the rifle to the other. The original Tavor, it was time consuming to convert it from one to the other and it required the replacement of a bolt to eject out the other side of the rifle. All the other parts that it came with were swappable from one side to the other, but you had to take the gun completely apart to do it, had to know what you were doing, probably had to watch a YouTube video or two. This gun makes that conversion process from left to right hand much easier. The only tool you're gonna require is the tip of a bullet, and you don't have to replace the bolt, all right? You can just reverse the bolt and the bolt's clearly marked right or left hand. It's all done through field stripping now. And we'll talk about that here really quickly, but let's break the gun down for field stripping. So to field strip the gun, of course, you're gonna to wanna to make sure the weapon's empty. I'm gonna leave the magazine in it for now just to make it easy to lock open. Pull the bolt to the rear, and the magazine's not all the way inserted. Pull the bolt to the rear, and that locks the bolt to the rear. Your magazine release is right here by your index finger like an X95. This is a, a, a X95 feature. The trigger from here of the Tavor is gone. Hit this and your magazine will fall free from the rifle. Now, if you'll take a look, the charging handle cut is also present on the right hand side of the receiver. Right here by my index finger, you're gonna see an L-shaped cut. That's because you can also pull the bolt to the rear and rotate it up like an H and K. When you do that, you disengage the magazine stop. So now to load the rifle, I can do the HK slap. All right, so you have that option. It's non-reciprocating, it locks in the forward position. There's a little clasp there that keeps it in place so you can shoot the rifle with your thumb behind it and you're not gonna get whacked by the charging handle. So, okay. Now we're gonna wanna put that bolt home to release the spring pressure on the bolt and carrier. So I'm gonna do the HK slap. I'm gonna take the tip of a bullet, push the pin out. This is just like a Tavor or an X95. The butt plate comes down. Now it's worth noting that even though this thing's 308, it just has a thin plastic butt plate. On the X95 and the Tavor, you have a thick rubber recoil pad, which you don't really need for a 5.56. Not that this rifle kicks all that bad. All right, so I, I'll just turn it this way so you guys can see what's going on. Hinge this down, grab your bolt and carrier group, pull it out. And then if you wanna take your trigger group out, it's just like an X95 or Tavor. Just push those pins through. This is your bolt hold, bolt release. Pull that over, shake, and your trigger group drops straight into the dirt. We're gonna do a reliability test here this afternoon too. All right, so. What I've been told is that these are not compatible with the Tavor X95 triggers. So hopefully Geisley or somebody else will come out with a trigger for it in the future. But I'll be honest with you, the trigger's not that bad right out of the box. It's a, it's a darn good trigger. Infinitely better than the trigger that came in the original Tavor, which was like 15 pounds, maybe 12. All right, put it back in. All the pins are captive, so you don't have to worry about the pins falling out. So I just put the trigger pack back in. I'm not gonna go into the bolt breakdown, but you have a pin that holds everything together here. You pull your firing pin out the rear, the bolt comes out the front. You will notice you have two plungers that are your ejectors and then your extractor claw. On the top, you'll see there's a pin right here. It's clearly marked left and right handed. When you get your rifle, it's a simple matter of removing your bolt and swapping a few things, reversing a few things and putting it back together to make it eject out the other side of the rifle a special bolt is not required. I'm gonna go ahead, I have some uh, breakthrough clean lube here. I'm gonna go ahead and put some lube on the gun. It is brand new. We sighted it in with the new American Defense Red Dot sight. Doesn't require a whole lot of lubricant, guys. I'm just gonna go ahead and just 
wipe it down a little bit there. All right, so put her back together. Well, you know what? Let's show you how you do this other conversion here. This is really cool. So when you want to, say you're a left-handed shooter and you want to move your charging handle from the left-hand side of the gun to the right-hand side of the gun, all you have to do is draw this, unlatch it from its locked position. On the back, there's a little detent that you can hit with the tip of a bullet. You push in on the little detent and pull up and the charging handle comes off. If you're familiar with the ARX Beretta, this is kind of similar. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna reach in here and just flip this. There's a little detent that holds it in place and you'll see the stud now pop out on this side of the rifle. All I gotta do now is put the charging handle back in place, push it until it locks in, and now I have a right hand charging rifle. Very, very simple. With the Tavor, a completely different process. One thing that's missing from this is the, are the flip-up sights that you would find on the X95 and, X, and Tavor, not present with the rifle. And at least the rifle we got at Copper didn't have any sights in the box. So this one has a 16 inch, 16 and a half inch uh, barrel, which is cold hammer forged, chrome lined bore and chamber. It also, from what I understand, is available with a 20 inch barrel. All right, so kind of like they had the 16 and the 18 inch barrel Tavors. This one has a five, uh, five eighths thread on it. We have an OSS suppressor on there. And uh, yeah, very, very cool setup. This one does have an adjustable gas regulator on it. So here on the front, you'll have clear markings right here on the front of the receiver. And it's set to regular. There's a little tick mark right here that tells you, a little witness mark that tells you what your gas setting is. So you have regular, adverse, suppressed and then just shut off completely shuts the gas off and then you turn it one more click and you can take the plug out and clean your gas system uh, if you're so inclined right now we just have it set to the regular setting but if you want to use a bullet tip that's where you're going to get the leverage to make adjustments to your gas system okay one other thing i'll show you while i have it here you push this little detent and it slides off just like an x95 you have a rail cover and now you have a pick rail on the bottom. This is polymer. On top, we have a pick rail, but just like its predecessors, it's bolted down and is made of steel or perhaps aluminum. Okay, so we also have QD mounts both sides of the rifle, and up front, we have M lock rail sections here that you can, if you want to run a two-point sling, you can put an M-lock uh, stud up there for a QD if you would like. And then one other really cool feature about reversing the gun from left to right hand setup. So you'll notice it has an ejection port buffer here on the right-hand side of the rifle. If you look on the other side of the rifle, well, there's an ejection port buffer in the front and it's closed. What in the world, right? Well, when you reverse the bolt on your carrier and put it back together as a left-hand gun, you're gonna to have to change over your ejection ports. Before, you had to pry off a piece of, of steel and polymer and take a screwdriver, take your port buffer off, move it to the other side, put a little you know, ejection port piece of plastic in there. It was, it was time consuming. Now, you simply pull up, slide the trap door over, rotate it so it locks into its position there. Oh, I gotta turn it around here. Okay, so now I've opened it on this side and you'll see more clearly what I'm doing on the other side. Now I gotta close it on this side. So I pull out on this port cover. I'm gonna rotate it 180 degrees and then put it into its little locking recess and now I've closed it. Now the gun, once I swap the bolt over, will eject out the other side of the rifle. Toolless, huge improvement over the original Tavor and even the X95. So as you can see, a lot of changes have taken place. Another interesting thing is, just like the original X95 and Tavor, you can switch your selector levers around. You have a tiny one over here on the right-hand side. You have a larger one on the other side. It's a quarter turn to fire, and you can swap those out. Tip of a bullet, push a little detent, slide it off, and reverse them. Ambi uh, mag release, present on both sides. And this is a standard X95 grip frame. 
so you can swap it out if you just want the trigger guard or you want to change the color of the grip panels, whatever. It's compatible with X95 grips. All right, I think that's pretty much it in terms of features and swapping the thing out from left or right hand use. In my opinion, this is a, uh, a really a strong product improved version of the Tavor. Uh, if I can line up the slots there. All right, put it back in, push the pin across, and I need to reverse my charging handle, but there you guys go. Very simple to maintain, easy to switch from left to right hand use, easy to make adjustments to the gas system. I mean, they really, really did their homework on this rifle, in my opinion, in terms of the design. All right, guys, we have a Hawk Optics. It's a Frontier. It has a magnification from 4 to 20 power, 30 millimeter scope, and... Uh, we got the same American Eagle 150 grain, ball ammo, just the affordable stuff. And we're gonna see how well this performs at 250 yards. Should do a little bit better than the red dot sight, I would think, because I could definitely see the target more clearly. And I broke the center out of the, uh, the target. <laughs> broke the little flapper. Let's move over to the eight inch. I must be hitting low. All right, let's try the, uh, the P-Mag here. Do a little bit of shooting at the eight inch. I think it's hitting a little bit low. Hold over a wee bit. This wind is unreal, guys. We have 15 mile an hour gusting winds. This is, wind is horrible. Maybe it's hitting high. Yeah, there we go. And that's me again, keeping the bolt from locking open. So yeah, it's hitting a little bit high. I had to aim low to get on the target, and uh, looks like it's 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 hitting a little bit off center. But not too shabby for a 150 grain ball. And I broke my darn target. This 308 was rocking that that heavy target with the big plate on it. Has some power. Sweet shooting rifle. Well guys, we fired off several hundred rounds out of the Tavor 7, out of one of the new ones. Now I will say that this one shoots differently than the prototype that I had for months and months and months. That one, none of us wanted to shoot because the thing was absolutely brutal. The recoil impulse felt like the rifle was whacking in the jaw every time you fired it. And that was for me, Jason, and everybody we let shoot it. That's not the case anymore. I don't know if they changed something. It certainly seems that they have because this rifle shoots so incredibly pleasant that it would, I would liken it to the recoil impulse of a 7.62 by 39. I mean, it, it's really, truly tamed, and that's with and without the suppressor. We fired it both ways. So uh, overall, for 1999, I think by far, this is a peerless 308 bullpup on the market. I don't think you're gonna find a better 308 bullpup. Now, it's not a sub-minute gun. If you're looking for that, you're not gonna find it here. We did our testing with 150 grain ball, just the generic American Eagle stuff from Federal, and it gave us respectable groups set up just like this with the red dot sight. We went ahead and put the Hawk Optic, the Frontier, 4 to 20 power scope on it. We, both Jason and I both shot groups, which you can see over here, my target's on the bottom. Uh, it measures 1.3 MOA, 
he shot a 1.8 MOA group using Federal 168 grain match ammunition. We chose that ammo to use in the gun because it does have a 1 in 12 twist barrel. I failed to mention earlier that this one does have a short stroke gas piston system in it, uh, and that's different than the X95 or the Tavor, which is a little miniature uh, long stroke system. So again, a number of changes to this rifle, and it seems like they took what they've learned from the X95 and the Tavor and made a new gun pulling from both of those designs and adding some new twists that ultimately make it uh, really, really cool. I would like to see this in other calibers. I wish it was in 6.5 Creedmoor. I would even like to see a downsized version of this uh, to, the, to, to compete against X95, which I know they'll never do. But I really like the features of the gun, how it handles. The only thing that I would prefer is that it would have its original Tavor trigger release system back here, but uh, some people disagree with me on that, that particular point. But the ability to switch it between left and right hand usage without having to change bolts and simply doing it using the tip of a bullet through the roof for the left-handed shooter. So many companies leave lefties out of the mix and it's just not cool to do. <laughs> lefties unite coming from a right-handed dude. So the American Defense uh, spec, cool red dot sight at 369, you know, it's competing against primary arms, which I've had a lot of good luck with. And so we'll see how it hangs. Uh, we'll, we'll definitely do some shooting. This rifle is accurate enough for me that I would be comfortable going into the field and hunting with it. And um, yeah, so I'm definitely gonna be shooting this rifle a lot more. If you guys have any questions, ask those questions down below. We are viewer supported. We don't take money from gun companies. They're not paying us to talk about this gun. We're viewer supported via Patreon. There's a link down below. Follow that link and consider supporting us here at the Military Arms Channel so we can continue to bring you honest, unbiased information as humanly possible without the influence of gun manufacturer money. Also, please swing by, check out coppercustom.com. Last but not least, we are Twitch gamers. If you'd like to join us on a Twitch live stream on the PSN network, become a Patreon supporter, send us a note, tell us what your PSN name is, we'll add you as a friend, and you can join us on a live stream. Guys, thanks for 11 years of support, and we'll talk to you soon. Damn, he didn't fall through the chair. I didn't, and I thought I was going to, because this thing's totally ripped out. If I bounce, it's gonna go. <laughs> Look at that. <laughs>